Would uh, they provide money, funding for mm -hmm. uh, for international students? They uh, we're trying to provide uh, more accommodation to look after international students. Uh, they provide a visa-free policy, almost visa-free. I mean, it's very simple to get visas. Okay. And 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 the nice thing is that uh, any student can work in Hong Kong after graduation. So uh, uh, that uh, all that package is a very nice package, uh, mm -hmm. and and that's helped us to just in the last. I mean, we really only started as an educational hub in, let's say, 2005, 2006. So it's oh, just been about five, six, seven years. Um, and uh, already it's become uh, quite, well, a reasonably popular place anyway. But I think part of the part of what's really going on, I think, is uh, so we talked about the economy earlier. Mm -hmm. But actually, the uh, uh, when you look at the job opportunities, so I said that uh, international students are all allowed to stay in Hong Kong if they want to and work. You know, the, the actual uh, uh, statistics for the University of Hong Kong are 99.8% employment for all graduates wow. for the last seven years consecutive, every year for seven years. So, so those statistics full can't employment. be boasted by most countries. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think there wow. are many, many universities in the world that, that are comprehensive that can rival that. So it's, uh, it's a very good. And, and, and as it's not just the University of Hong Kong, mm -hmm. it's actually, of course, the economy of Hong Kong as well. All right. And there is a sort of melting pot of cultures that happen in Hong Kong, as opposed to mainland China. I'm not saying that uh, China doesn't have a lot of uh, <laughs> diversity happening, but when you take Hong Kong especially, there's so many things happening when you talk about all the cultures that are living there. That's right, and uh, and, th and that's what makes it so nice. I mean, we, we often talk about it being an East meets West place, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, uh, that people like me can, can live there very easily and very comfortably. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, and and there's, you know, there's a re reasonably big Indian community, there's a big Filipino community, community there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and of course there's a lot of expatriate uh, employees who work within the service industry, the banking sectors for example, insurance sectors. Uh, so it is a very nice, I mean at the university itself it's also uh, becoming very international in nature. It's, uh, we have uh, students from about 80 or 90 different countries now on campus at this moment in time. Uh, so, uh, and. Uh, and uh, I mean, the, the only continent we're still trying to sort of uh, uh, make uh, get more, with yes, get, get more <laughs> students in is, is Africa. Um, okay. We do have students from Africa, of course, and we indeed have an African studies program in mm -hmm. the university. But that one needs a lot more work on to d to develop it. So. I see. But what are the misconceptions that some of the parents, as well as the students, may have about studying abroad, and what are the myths that are really not true at the end of the day? Well, I don't know. I, I often ask people. Uh, what uh, what do you know about Hong Kong? And they sort of say, oh, Jackie Chan, you know, <laughs> fights in the street. <laughs> well, of course, you know, <laughs> so, of course, Hong Kong is actually one of the safest cities in the world. Uh, you know, according Nothing to United will happen in there. So, yeah. so, so there are some misconceptions there. Um, I, I, I mean, I think uh, it's not so much a case of misconceptions. I think it's more a case of, of, of getting the message across. Actually, when okay. you look at the opportunities in Hong Kong, and I'm not just talking about my university, so I'm talking about all the universities mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. Um, actually, I think they're amazing. I mean, uh, I, you know, of course, I'm very biased, obviously, yeah. But, yeah. but honestly, <laughs> if I look at the fundamentals, I look at the costs, I look at the safety, I mean, it, and the quality of education, I mean, I think mm -hmm. it's astounding. I think it's a really good... So, actually, if, uh, when, when I talk to students and parents, that, um, usually at the beginning they sort of think, you know, Hong Kong? Yeah. <laughs> Why would I want to go to Hong Kong? Why would my daughter want to go to Hong Kong? And by the end they're sort of thinking, wow, you know, this is a really interesting op uh, opportunity. Right. And of course, it, you know, uh, hopefully I'm just adding that opportunity to other opportunities in Asia and of course around the rest of the world. Um, right. Of course. Uh, this question comes from our Facebook page um, from um, Mrs. Veer Singer. All right, so after your extensive work with enrollments, uh, what do you think are the key points uh, students should take into consideration when they're choosing a uni, a university? Okay, it's uh, a good question. Um, uh, I, th I mean, the first thing is I think that you have to try to look at the quality of teaching and learning, and that's the most difficult thing to do. 
uh, because there's no real uh, ranking of uh, the quality of teaching and learning. So what you have to do is you have to try to go to, uh, for example, the government websites and yeah. try to look up reviews, quality assurance reviews, for example, that, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in Hong Kong we conduct these every four or five years. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to look at uh, what those reports say on the, on the quality of teaching alone. Or you look at places like the Time Tire Education Supplement or the Chronicle in, in the US and try to look at uh, reports on uh, teaching and learning. But this is very, very difficult to, to figure out uh, which are good teaching and learning universities and which are not so good. Um, that's one. And I, I would say that in this day and age, uh, you also want to choose a university that has a very good support structure for international students. Uh, mm -hmm. So that means uh, it's, it's not an issue of cost. Of course, cost is just a fact. Uh, yeah. uh, um, but you want to look at what goes on underneath the, within the university. So do, do they look after, uh, do they have prayer rooms for Muslim students? Do they have a vegetarian restaurant? Yeah. Uh, you know, how is the accommodation? Is it properly segregated? Is it safe? You know, yeah. those are the questions that underlie a lot of parents' uh, sure. concerns. So I think, I think those two things are the most important. Of course, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, you want to look at, uh, well, we, we don't like rankings particularly, <laughs> but, you know, we know parents look at those rankings. Yeah. And so, but I think they give a very superficial view of, of what a university is like, and you have to try and delve down inside. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first uh, moved to Hong Kong, you know, I, I, I had, of course, I went to the library and looked up things in the library about <laughs> Hong Kong and the university, but, but but actually, the best uh, source of information was actually talking to people who had taught at the University of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And, and for, for parents, the best thing to do, of course, is to find uh, students who are currently studying at the university right. or who are just, have just graduated. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there's, there's enough of those around. To, I mean, we can always find mm -hmm. uh, buddies for, <laughs> you know, to, to, to line up with a particular yeah. student who's interested in coming to the university. Right. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Virgo Singh, I hope that answers your <laughs> question. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's true. And what drew you to Hong Kong in the first place? I mean, 35 odd years ago? Uh, it was entirely serendipity. It was one of those... Uh, um, well, the story is not very exciting, but uh, <laughs> but I had a very good friend who was a Malaysian friend, and uh, we were just uh, we had been through university together, and uh, uh, we, we were just chatting about our futures. And he said to me, uh, "Oh, if you ever get the chance, you should go to Hong Kong." Mm -hmm. You know, and I sort of said, "You know, <laughs> I don't want to go to Hong Kong." And um, uh, and, and he talked about how the at that time the salaries in Hong Kong were very good and anyway a number mm -hmm. of factors and, and the weird thing was uh, that was on a Sunday and I went back to work on Monday and in my post in the afternoon was the job bulletin from okay. the uh, British Psychological Society mm -hmm. and in it there was a job at the University of Hong Kong and it was in my area so right. it kind of it was just one of those things that happens you know so so of course you look into it you do your research and you try and figure out and indeed it was a wonderful job right. and no regrets about doing that at all oh absolutely none no, I, uh, <laughs> and what is your area of expertise I mean what did you qualify in during the I'm university? actually gonna guess psychology <laughs> absolutely correct <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. He's done his research. Yeah. Well. He's done his research. <laughs> yes, I have for the first time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of confessions for Jason on today's show. Yeah, but I think right. the, the, the great food, that it, it, eh, I'm just letting everything out of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so psychology is something that really helps you with the students, I'm sure. Uh, probably not. I mean, I, 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 I was more of a, uh, what we call a cognitive psychologist, so I used to look at things like learning and, uh, okay, and memory right. and okay. the like, so okay. it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was rather different. I mean, no, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think being a parent is more useful. Uh, in terms of student recruitment because mm -hmm. you do understand you know what the issues are that parents are worried about and and of course you know with uh, I have four children of my own and uh, oh. you know two of them have been through university so far and the other two will be coming up soon to university so you, so you think you have to think in their terms as well mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I think that's uh, that, that's been more valuable than being mm -hmm. a psychologist to be honest oh, of course, but when you speak about university now if I was looking for a university I would look at extracurricular activities and you know the sort of community <coughs> activities as well as sports and other cultural uh affairs that are available for students so that makes an important impact on a balanced life for any university student yes so what are the things yes. that students should really go for well 
Uh, I often say that, uh, and this may not be necessarily a very positive thing to say, but I often say that the University of Hong Kong is not a party university. It's That's it. Okay. We'll go home there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but I think, like a lot of Asian universities, you know, there is a sense of, you know, uh, you know, high schools in Asia are very competitive, as we yeah. all know. Parents put a lot of pressure on. The, s the teachers put a lot of pressure on. So, so you can't. Dis that doesn't disappear yeah. uh, you know when you come to university mm -hmm. in Asia I mean that uh, that that definitely continues mm -hmm. uh, I mean it may not be at the same sort of level as when you're doing your A-levels or your international baccalaureate or whatever uh, but nevertheless it does continue there so I think but I, of course you know uh, in every university there is balance of course mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean you know all universities will have very good sports facilities this is something which uh, we've always promoted uh, um, uh, but also I think uh, you know the clubs and societies mm -hmm. which are generated by the students themselves uh, all reflect the interests of the students of course uh, yeah. so so there will always be a club or a society for whatever you're interested in and and if there isn't you just start that one up yourself <laughs> so, so, so that's what your new life is about isn't that's it? right and right and and <laughs> you know the nice thing about uh, students is that they all have that initiative to want to start up things of their own I mean, we, we, we send a lot of students, uh, sorry, we don't send, students go uh, yeah. off to do volunteering work in other parts of the world. Uh, they go off to, to Africa to look at, yeah. you know, work within disadvantaged communities. But a lot of those students come back and, and they, they don't just uh, say, okay, tick, I've done that one. Yeah. Uh, they, they then actually start, uh, I, I know a number of cases where the students have actually started up their own website to then generate more interest mm -hmm. in that I particular see. disadvantaged group. Right. So, uh, um, it's uh, just what, a case of getting the ball rolling. That's right. Uh, what took you so long? Dot com. If you look at that one, you'll see uh, one of our students who's now graduated, and okay. uh, and he's trying to then, uh, you know, continue his work which he did as a volunteer when he was a university student. So what took you so long? Dot com. That's catchy. That is. That I really like that. is. All right, so Professor, I think we've come to the end of this particular segment, but it's been a great pleasure having you on the show, and uh, we wish you all the best for the rest of your visit in Sri Lanka as Thank well. Thank you very much. And I'm sure that all the students here in the country are going to gain a lot from uh, listening to what you have to say and you know, opening up their minds to a new right. sort of opportunity, isn't it, Jason? Right. Um, let me ask you this real quick question before we leave. Do you like being called Professor, or do you like being called John? <laughs> <laughs> I, when I first moved to the university, I asked people to call me John, mm -hmm. and uh, nobody would. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's so that, just that, a cultural too much, thing. Indeed, it's, yeah. uh, there's too much respect. So Actually, I quite, I quite like Professor John, actually. It's yeah. quite, kind of casual and chatty. You know, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> More Professor, it's been such a joy <laughs> having you on the show. <laughs> the, but yeah, unfortunately, we're at the end of our show. Uh, but thank you so much for being out. We really uh, appreciate thank it. Thank you very much for invited me. It's, uh, right. it's lovely talking to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, you can visit our Facebook page on www.facebook.com forward slash Good Morning Sri Lanka. Click the mm -hmm. like button and stand the chance to win merchandise by MTV. If you want more information about what the show was all about today, you can email us at mtvsports at maharaja.ok. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> so right. I, I wanted to do that together in unison, but uh, always a fan. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <start> it. <laughs>